The Romance of the Rancho. San Gabriel, 1771. Mission San Gabriel founded. San Gabriel, 1781. Settlers moved to San Gabriel Mission. San Gabriel, 1821. Christmas celebrated at completed mission. The Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles presents the romance of the rancho, a weekly dramatization of the events and people who made early California history so colorful and adventurous. Our wandering vaquero, Frank Graham, returns tonight with the story of a Christmas long ago in the days of the dawn. The most reassuring factor in this high-speed, hectic, and just now very troubled world is the permanence of most of the really important good things of life. The permanence, for example, of Christianity and Christmas, the durability of character and the primary virtues, the fact that right somehow continues to triumph, and that man's progress, however temporarily set back, in the long run is always forward and upward. History proves these statements, and here in Southern California, it is comforting to look back and see the hardships and trials that have been surmounted, the battles that have been won against great odds, the defeats that have been suffered, and later retrieved by those who have gone before us. Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles urges you when listening to these broadcasts of the true events of the Southland history to keep these thoughts in mind. The sponsors will feel more than repaid if these programs can help to strengthen faith and confidence in the future of our community and our country. And here is our wandering vaquero, Frank Graham, to tell us the story. Buenas noches, señoras y señores. Tonight we're going to tell you the true story of the founding of one of the greatest civilizing influences in the history of our section of Southern California, the Mission San Gabriel, and the story of Pedro the Indian, which is purely fictional, illustrating how Christmas might have been celebrated there a great many years ago. I'm sure that you will find it a story filled with the romance of the ranchos. <laughs> It was about the year 1770 in Mexico City when the great Franciscan friar, Junipero Serra, Padre President of the College of Missionaries, announced a decision to one of his brothers. Brother Junipero, we have awaited you at evening meal. We were afraid that you might be ill. Huh? Uh, no, no, my son. I'm not ill. Far from it. But this petition, it is very important. And I wish to get it to the Viceroy as soon as possible. Important? See, my son. Upon the success of this, my life work was not fatal. Your life work, Padre. But I am about the California fire of a chain of missions stretching from the one at San Diego to Monterey. What? That wilderness? Wilderness? But according to the diaries of our brother Juan Crespi, it is a beautiful land, rich and fertile. But devoid of towns of any civilization. Nothing but great empty plains and heathen Indians. It would be a miserable place to live. But, Padre, it is not for ourselves that we go into the desert. It is not for our comfort that we must think. It is those heathen Indians who call us. I, I know. Think of them, thousands of heathen savages, thousands of souls searching for salvation. We can, we must bring it to them, so that they too may know the peace and the wonder of faith. It is a most worthy ambition, Padre. But such a tremendous task. Do you think it possible? Padre, the members of our order have always accomplished what they set out to do in the service of God. We cannot fail in this, and we will not. But it will take many men, much money. See, that is why I pen my petition to the Viceroy. With his help, I will have the money. And the men are coming. A boat with 20 new friars is even now on the seas, coming from Spain. 
See, my brother, it will not be long before we shall plant the banner of the Virgin Madre on the soil of Alta California and bring civilization and God to that beautiful country. Junipero Serra's great dream of a chain of missions stretching the length of California was to be realized. The Viceroy authorized the construction of the first five and plans were started. And so it was that early in September of 1771, two padres, Pedro Benito Gambon and Angel Somera, arrived with their founding party at what had been chosen as a suitable site for the fourth in the series of California missions. Close by the banks of what is now the River San Gabriel, they camped. Put more brush against the side here, Sergeant. Say, hey, Padre, we will have it finished very soon. <laughs> bueno, it is not a very imposing building for a mission, is it? Not very, but it's the best we can do in so short a time. Tomorrow we can begin on a more permanent home. See, uh, but in the meantime, this house, made of the good earth and brush, will serve as the house of God. In it, we can begin our task of bringing the word of the Lord to these poor savages. That looks like it may be a pretty big job. They don't seem so friendly. Look at them, just standing around at a distance, watching us. I wish I knew what they were talking about over there. They, they were really gods, not men. See, they bring with them great animals, bigger than the deer. They ride upon their backs. The animals are their friends. Do as they tell them. Yeah. It is black magic. They must be bad gods. I say we should destroy them now. For they mean to stay here. They build house of brush. But they do not look fearsome. Perhaps they are good spirits. Come to help us. No. The crow has spoken truly. These strange men with their animals must be destroyed. Why not approach and speak to them? Learn why they come. No. Listen. The gods of the mountain are wrathful. They shake the earth. It is their moment. Those strangers bring disaster. The gods are Padre, Padre, the earthquake. It will be over in a moment, Sergeant. Have no fear. You see, it fades away even now. Padre, I don't like this. My son, there is nothing to fear. It can do us no harm. See? It has not even disarranged a twig of our house. But maybe the next one. Come. Come. Let us kneel down and thank the Lord for our safe journey. May he shower his blessings on this venture which we here found. The Mission San Gabriel Arcanhel. Come, come pray with me, my brothers. And so was founded the first site of the Mission San Gabriel. The Padre started to work on a more permanent building. And for a time, the Indians offered no opposition. Then one day, provoked by some incident... I don't like it, Padre. Look at them. There must be 200. And they're advancing slowly on us. See? They're painted and they have weapons. This is the attack we have feared. I'm afraid it is. Soldados! Load your muskets! Get ready to fire! Wait, Sergeant. Wait. There must be another way. But, Padre... We can't just stand here and do nothing. If we are to die, we can at least die fighting. Life, not death, is our mission. There is another way. There must be. Well, we'd better find it quickly. They're coming closer. In a minute, they will charge. Let me see. What would impress these simple-minded fools? I might try the banner. The banner? See, the banner of the church. The banner on which is pictured the Virgin Madre. Madre, I'm a religious man. The banner means much to me. But to these naked savages, it will mean nothing. That we cannot say, my son. The power of the Lord is manifest in many ways. Just the same, I would rather trust my life to the musket, not the banner. Please, let me fire on them. No, not until there is no other way. Not until I give the order. Look out, then. Here they come. They're running now. They'll start shooting the arrows in a minute. Then, my son, I shall raise the banner. And then follow it. So, there. Padre, they stop. They stop and stand gazing at the picture of the Virgin. See, my son, the power of the Lord is mysterious, but it is with us protecting us. I cannot believe it. 
Look. They are falling down on their knees before the pictures. See? Throwing down their arms. And placing beads and ornaments at the foot of the banner. It is incredible. Incredible. Not incredible, my son. Or do we not do the same? This is more than a symbol of good, my son. This banner of our church is an act of power for good. And it will prove the salvation of these poor barbarians and bring success to our venture. Thank the old Lord. Charmed by the lovely picture of the Virgin Mary, the Indians were subdued more easily than by force. And for a time, the task of the Padres was proceeding toward fulfillment. Many of the Indians were baptized. They began to learn the language and the arts of living which the Padres taught. They made plans for more permanent mission buildings. But when the winter rains came, it became apparent that a new site would have to be found. Padre, the water was coming up fast. It will watch the cut away in no time. See, I had no idea that this peaceful little stream could be turned into a raging torrent so swiftly. We had better get out. Move to higher ground. It'll be over in a few days, then we can come back. No, Sergeant. We will never come back. Or it will be the same every year. No, we must look for a new site for the mission. You mean all the plans we have made, these huts, all is to be abandoned? See, si, it will be better so. Madre de Dios, months of work. But we must build on firm ground where our handiwork may stand in safety for years, centuries if need be. You are right, but the months of work... Never mind, my son. We must be prepared to face discouragement and start again. Always we must have the courage to start again. Si, I will tell the others to get ready. And so we say goodbye to the first mission, San Gabriel, only to build a new and greater one. And they did build a new and greater mission, San Gabriel, upon the present site. First a small house in which the Padres kept their uncomfortable quarters. Then the great church was started. Around it clustered the homes of the Indian neophytes and later the Spanish settlers who came from Mexico. Laboriously, the work was carried on, and slowly the great mission took shape. Then, one day in 1797... Ah, oh, Padre, Buenos dias. How is the work proceeding today, Sergeant? Very badly, Padre. I don't know what is wrong. Only this handful of the workmen have appeared. The rest I cannot find. I know they will be late. They're holding an election today. An election? See, si, for Alcalde of the mission. Padre, uh, what does this mean? It means the Governor Navy has had his way. He claims that we were not meant to have jurisdiction over the Indians, that they must govern themselves. Yeah, but it is well known that they are not able to govern themselves. Only a few years ago, they were naked savages. I know, but the Governor has had his way, and today they hold their first election. Padre, I, I don't like it. It'll mean trouble. Already they are too unruly. See? Si. Oh, uh, here comes some of them now. The election must be over. Yeah. Well, they'd better watch out. I won't stand for any... Padre Pedro, buenos dias. Buenos dias, my son. You're finished? See, si, now can go to work building hut for beautiful lady in picture. Uh, a beautiful lady? You remember the beautiful lady's picture on the banner, Sergeant? Oh, see. Si. Pedro here understands that the church we are building is for worship of her and her son. See, si, hut for beautiful lady. Well, if you ever want it finished, you'd better not waste time in elections. Get busy and build it. Go on, get to work. My son, you must not be harsh with these simple children. Padre, I know you like this one, especially because he's named after you. But he's one of the worst of the lazy wretches. He never gets his quarter of work finished. Sergeant, you must remember to watch how well he works and not worry about how long it takes him. Pedro makes each brick with loving care. His is the work of a craftsman, and it is good work. That is more important than speed. That. I might have known you would excuse him. He's just lazy, he and his friend Juan. And you are impatient, my son. Too impatient. Bah. And where is your friend Juan, Pedro? Juan, no work today. What? What do you mean he won't work today? He not feel good. But who told him he didn't have to report here anyway? Me. Me tell him. You? Why, you Pedro, are... what do you mean? How can you tell Juan he doesn't have to work today? You have not that authority. See, si. me tell him. Me, Alcalde now, elect today. Why, you, I'll put you both in the stock. No, no. Law says no touch, Alcalde. Me chief here now. 
No can hurt. Is that so? Just for that, you'll get the lash? No, no, my son. He is right. The new law exempts the alcalde from our punishment. We can do nothing. You mean we must say nothing? Our authority is gone? See, perhaps it is for the best. I cannot say. No, nothing but evil will come from this. You wait and see. And the effects of Governor Navy's new law was to bring evil to the mission. For the Indians were not ready for self-government under a strange and foreign civilization. They became unruly and insolent. And as more white settlers poured into the land, the simple Indians were easily corrupted and debauched. But work proceeded at the mission in spite of handicaps. The buildings sprang up. Fields and orchards bore fruit. Herds of cattle multiplied and thrived. The Indians learned the arts of the white man. Tilling the soil, caring for cattle, weaving, sewing, making soap and grinding meal. But as time went on, friction between soldiers and Indians and settlers caused periodic bad feeling. It was at one such time... Padre! See, my son. My Pedro. Sergeant. Why do you have Pedro bound? I just wanted you to know that your favorite here is not so righteous as you think. I'm about to give him the lash. What has he done? He struck one of my soldiers. It was lucky he was not killed in return. Is this true, Pedro? Si, Padre Pedro. Sergeant, I am inclined to believe that if Pedro struck your soldier, he had good reason to. Padre! I mean it. Those men of yours have been unnecessarily harsh toward the Indians. I cannot approve of it. My men are harsh only when these savages try their insolent tricks. They have become impossible since they have their own elections. I cannot agree with you. And I am not pleased by this action of yours. That can't be helped, Padre. He gets the lash nevertheless. No, no. Sergeant, I ask you not to do this. The Christmas celebration is not far off. In the spirit of that great anniversary, let him go. We must be punished, Padre. Or soon we will have no authority at all. No, no. Me go away. Out here. Pedro. Stop, you heathen. Come back here. Pedro. Pedro, come back. Don't run away. Come back. Well, Sergeant, what do you find? So, at last you learn the truth about your precious Pedro. You'll be sorry to hear that he's no better than the worst of them. You have found him? No, he's gone all right. But I know where he is. In the mountains? See, si. my men have definite word that he joined the band of renegade Indians in the mountains. The very tribe that is always robbing us. So, you see? I see. But the wayward son will return, Sergeant. I know that he will come back and I will welcome him. <laughs> Pedro, Pedro. See. Si. Why you sad? Sit, stare at fire like dead man. I think San Gabriel. San Gabriel? Oh, no more home. You never go back. They kill you. Padre and not kill. But soldiers. See. Si. Uh. Pedro. Pedro, you feel better when you ride with us out on raid. Oh, that good. You no feel good just sitting at campfire staring. I no like ride on raid. It's not right. Only Padre say not right. Chief say right. Chief better man than Padre. No. I think Padre better man. He say not right. I feel not right. Oh. You feel different when you try. You try once, then see. Pedro, they no want Indian at San Gabriel. They say you bad. You forget San Gabriel. Can never go back. You bad Indian now. So, you like us. You stay here. Go on raid. Feel better. Uh, come. Come see what things took on last raid. Come to campfire with riders. Look. I stay here. No. Come look. Riders raid San Gabriel. Bring many things. San Gabriel? See. Si. Bring many things. Come look. See. Si. I come look. Pedro, here things. Look, much food, sticks of gold. What that? That picture paint on skin. Unroll, see picture. One. That picture of 
beautiful lady. See? Si. From church, San Gabriel. See? Si. That beautiful lady, Bill Hupfor. See? Si. Fried her steak at San Gabriel. Bring here. No, cannot take. Must take back San Gabriel. Pedro, you loco. Keep here. Maybe make blankets. No, beautiful lady, take back San Gabriel. Must take. Padre say she great lady. Must be in great hut. Me take back. Chief want you no take. She me take. Pedro, chief no like. Kill you. Me take. Me take San Gabriel. Give. No. Stop. Pedro. Me take back. Pedro, come back. You'll be killed. Pedro. Down from the mountains ran a solitary Indian. Behind him came his vengeful brothers. Toward the mission of San Gabriel he ran. Toward the little settlement where even then the Padre prayed. Our Father in heaven, on this great night, bless these children of yours. Keep them safe and happy. And bring them the peace and goodwill you promised for us all. And for the wayward... Bring them back to the fold for this great celebration, this Christmas Eve. It was Christmas Eve at San Gabriel, and the Indians joined in celebration with the white settlers. Great was the rejoicing, for after attending Mass at the church, the whole population reveled in games and dancing. The favorite sport of the children and grown-ups alike was to join in performing the pastores, or pastoral play, in which the players went from door to door acting out the story of the nativity for each family at home. The children followed along with their own version, replete with the devil chasing the poor travelers. The performers, young and old, were then invited inside for refreshment. Dancing was the main feature of any Spanish fiesta, and music enlivened every gathering. The great fiesta of Christmas brought dancers from the whole countryside to join the celebration. Beautiful clothes, dark-eyed maidens with flashing eyes, gay caballeros, all made the great hall a rainbow of merry color. And in another part of the settlement, another party gathered for a game to celebrate Christmas Eve. A great pile of candy and nuts was tied into a sack and hung from the rafter. Then, one by one, the young men, blindfolded, swung at it with a stick. It was a Christmas version of Blind Man's Bluff called A Piñata, and great fun for everybody. <laughs> Once the bag was struck, its contents were spilled out upon the floor, and a mad scramble took place for a share of the tasty particles. Hey, what's the matter? Why does everyone suddenly stop? Look, look, senor. It's, it's the Indian Pedro. Madre de Dios, covered with blood. Look out, catch him. Pedro, Pedro, what is the matter? What has happened? Take, take to Padre. Oh, senor, he's hurt. He looks hurry to Padre. See. Si. Right away, Pedro. Make way there. Make way. Come, make way there. Padre, it's it's Pedro, the Indian. Pedro, my son. Here, place him here on the carpet. See, he. He looks badly hurt, Padre. Blood. Let me see. No, thank goodness. I don't think it's as serious as it looks. He's probably suffering more from exhaustion than from the blow. Padre, Pedro. See, my son, what is it? Me sorry. It's all right, Pedro. You shouldn't have run away, but you've come back. Must come. Bring beautiful lady. Beautiful lady? What he, he was carrying this, Padre. The banner of the Virgin that was stolen. Beautiful lady, in great hut, safe. See, si, Pedro, safe. And she will keep you safe, too, in her great hut. Me, not bad Indian. Bad, my son? If all of us strayed no farther from the path than you, this world would be far happier. My children... Let us all kneel and give thanks for the return of a lost lamb to the fold on this happy Christmas Eve. The 
Tomorrow is Christmas. To all of us, Christmas is and will remain, even through the most difficult times ahead, a day of reverent celebration, an occasion for the expression of sincere goodwill toward our families, friends, and fellow citizens. In the spirit of the season, each member of the entire Title Insurance and Trust Company organization joins tonight with his fellows in extending to you the best wishes for a Merry Christmas. As a personal expression of this wish, the Title Insurance and Trust Company's Men's Chorus, a group of 24 employees of the company, under the direction of Charles Monroe, presents a Christmas carol, Joy to the World. Ladies and gentlemen, by transcription, the Men's Chorus of the Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles. What's the program for next week, Frank? Next week, we recreate something of the fascinating story of the Rancho Buenos Aires, the land on which the truly modern cities of Westwood Village and Westwood Hills and the campus of UCLA stand. Be sure to hear it. And now, this is your wandering vaquero, Frank Graham, saying, Feliz Pascua, Merry Christmas to each and every one of you. And until next week, hasta la vista, señoras y señores. The Romance of the Ranchos, a presentation of the Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles, featuring Frank Graham as the wandering vaquero, is dramatized by John Duckle and produced by Ted Bliss, with special music arranged by Irwin Yo. Bob Lamont speaking and wishing you all a very merry Christmas. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.